Praise the Lord. I am very excited to be with you today. And I'm going to share his word. And I'm going to share a testimony that is ongoing even as I stand here. I was attacked yesterday by the devil, Satan, in my mind. And suddenly I could not remember the first scripture, the first word. The, it, was, it, was, it was really weird because I, I want to, with just that little bit of a testimony of what took place last evening and uh, how and why I stand here today and what God is about to do, I want to share his word and then go back to this testimony. The title today is The Treasure Entrusted Within Us, The Breath of God, the Holy Spirit. It is the Spirit. Genesis 2, 6, But a mist used to rise from the earth and watered the whole surface of the earth. And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the earth it was dust, the mist, he combined it, it became clay, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. God formed man out of the minerals of the earth. He took the dust and he took the mist, he made a clay, and even greater than Michelangelo ever did, God formed man in his own image, and he took man, and with his own lips, he breathed his breath into us, and we became a living, eternal being. Living. Hallelujah. I'm living today. I am on fire today, and I want to preach so bad that I need to lay down some scriptures before I stop, start stomping on the devil's head. I told the devil yesterday that you're a liar. He's a liar. He's a father of liars. That I would stand this morning in front of this camera and I will declare to you the Word of God as the Spirit of God within me brings it. He always brings it. He has renewed my mind. He has, he has put His mind in my mind. I, I am Christ-minded. I have the, His Spirit, His breath of God in me that leads me, guides me, teaches me that I may share with you. In, in verse, in John 3, 5, it says, Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of the water, born of a parent, mother, and the, and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Verse 6, That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not be amazed that I said to you, you must be born again. You must be born again. We must be born of the water, but because Adam and Eve in the garden, the third chapter of Genesis, they partook, they sinned, they died spiritually, but not, they were created a living soul, an eternal soul, that's man's problems. We are created for eternity, but they died spiritually that day. That breath that was breathed into them had died, and they Paid a price many, many, many times. In Ephesians 4.20, but you have not learned Christ, 21, if indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. Verse 22, that you put off concerning your former conduct the old man which which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. When, when you receive this born-again spirit, the spirit of our Father, that's sin, and His name is Father, I, I'll, I'll share with you. Jesus, in, in chapter 16 of uh, John, He said, Father, uh, I, I reveal Thy name. To them, and uh, I believe it's chapter verse six. I revealed thy name to them, Father. You know what the name of Father is? Is Father, Father. He's our Father. When we've been born again, 
when we're now a son and daughter, one day to be sons, when we are now a child of God, we have a father, a father, God. That is God himself. Because we have been born again and spiritually anew, and we have that breath of God once more residing within us that renews our minds, that renews our body, that renews us. We're born anew again, a son and a child of God. Hallelujah. We are his purchased portion, his possession. But we are to, we walk in a newness of mind. A renewed mind, one I have today that I was finding trouble last night finding. And I'm going to, I'm, it's going to take me a little bit to get settled down here today because I'm excited. I want to preach this morning the entire word of God. <laughs> I can't do that in one session, but it's bubbling in me. The devil is a liar. He has no accusation. I give him no reason to make a claim. I abide in my Lord Jesus Christ. I in him, he in me. I am a son of God and I have a father of God that I can come boldly to in the, before the throne of grace and ask for mercy in time of need. His grace, his empowerment. Father, renew my mind. Satan has attacked me. He has no right. He has no claim. And I stand here this morning declaring to you he's a liar. Because that word of God is bubbling in me today. My mind is, is Christ-minded. I have the word of God in my mouth. I could preach all day today, and I'm afraid I will if I don't get back to what I'm supposed to be doing. In Ephesians 4.24, that you put on the new man that was created according to God in true righteousness, and in holiness, and in holiness, and in holiness. Psalm 51.10, I only go here because David experienced something. There's no Bathsheba in my life. The Satan has no claim. But David quickly was, saw that he had really messed up. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit in me. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore me to the joy of your salvation and sustain me with a willing spirit. Verse 13, Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will be converted to you. David had made a grave mistake. He had went and laid with Uriah's, with, with one of his captain's wives. He, he, he had slept with Bathsheba. And now God's presence, he had sinned. He had lost the presence of God, the spirit of God that God had on his life. And he was crying out for forgiveness and restoration. And we know that God did restore David. But it was at a great price. It was at a great price. We, Satan has no claim. There's no Bathsheba in my life. I, I, the Lord Jesus Christ, I belong to him. I'm a purchased possession. I'm a prized possession, and that's what we're going to speak about today. I'm, I'm the Lord's portion. His people are his portion, as I will read. Deuteronomy 32.9, I'm going to read it to you. But we... We were bought with a tremendous price. He, unlike Abraham that got to take his son off of the altar, God had to put his son on the altar and leave him there that he pay the price for us. But in faith, the Lord knew the Father would raise him up, and he did, and he become our salvation. He became our sacrifice. He became our priestly portion. And we don't have, we, we can die spiritually. We can die, we dead spiritually, but we, we can reckon ourselves dead by faith 
and receive this righteousness, this right relation, and this adoption as son, and be renewed in the spirit of our minds, that we may teach. Some of us have different callings. I have a calling as a teacher, and God reveals his word to me. And, and, and I was crying last night, Lord. I, I, I know that the Lord delights in me being his son, and I'm his possession, but he doesn't cherish that any more than yours truly. I love being his son. I love being his teacher. I love being in the kingdom of God. I love my father. I delight in being able to come into his throne room and bow before him and praise his holy name. Without that spirit, without that Christ-mindedness, without that word standing at turning and burning within me. I am nothing. I was nothing before God came and bought me off that dung heap. Bought me out, brought me out. Cleaned me up. Created me anew. I was nothing. I had squandered everything. Whatever I thought I had, I had squandered it. God raised me up. He loved me. I got to know him as my father. He's been an amazing, wonderful father. And he is today. And his word that he has given me to share with you is burning and turning and churning. And I, I, I could preach a hundred sermons. I'm afraid I will if I'm not careful. Been crying a lot lately, it seems like. As you get older, I guess we get more emotional. <laughs> but it is emotional to be in love, to, to know that there's one that loves and cherishes me, that he looks after my family, my wife, my children, my grandchildren. He takes care of us. I know there's battles. It was a battle last night, but I'm telling you today, I'm standing here with a renewed mind this morning, and I'm telling you the devil is a liar. Don't accept that lie. I, I called my son. I said, I know I'm going to be fine, but I want you praying. Jonathan, my son, our youngest son, that, that God spoke to me and my wife independently, but together at the same time that we were supposed to have one more child, and we just did not think that. Was, we had six. We had a, the last had been two twins, and uh, we, we had a son that was I'm very proud of that's also a Christian that shares his testimony on the highways and the byways in the U.S. and a man of God and he's doing great. Love him and his family. Proud of him. But Jonathan was called and he was selected uh, for such a time as this. He has a, a gift of miracles and God has really gone out of his way. And so I, for him and his family, his beautiful wife is from Columbia, Indra, and now they're, they're a beautiful son. But so I guess a son's supposed to be handsome, but he's beautiful to me. His name is Elijah. <laughs> Elijah. Hallelujah. I believe Elijah. I love that name. Elijah. I love men of God. I love God. He loves me today and he loves you. He wants you to be a son and a daughter and one day sons. I, I shared that. I will continue to share that. That's this amazing inheritance that we have that's beyond our wildest comprehension. And Paul says you can't even comprehend. It's amazing what God has prepared for all those that love him. I want you to know, as much as he means to me, I know and he has showed me, and I'm going to share with you how much we mean to him. I know in Psalm 78, in verse 41, 41 there, 46, that he says that they, they rebelled and they contained it. And they continued in rebellion. And in, in verse 42, I believe it says, and they pained the Holy One of Israel. They pained him, his own children. They continued. And he says, well, I've sent my servants. And he, that's like the parable of the tenants, the parable of the men. I sent my servants and they, they, they would not pay them. I'll send my son. And we know the rest of the story. So I says, well, I've, I've sent my prophets. I've sent many. I've given them my law. I've, I've, I've done all these miracles for them. I've delivered them time and time again. I will send my son. 
And yet they said, give us Barabbas. They said, we have no king. He's not our king. They said, he's the king of the Jews. No, we have, Herod is our king. Herod is our king. They rejected his son and they killed him, even as, even as they did the, the parable. But how many know that God's not finished with his children, the Jews? As he, it was only our opportunity as Gentile. It was to the Jew first and then the Gentiles. Paul tells us that in Romans right there in the first chapter. To the Jew first. But us, also now to us, our day is coming to an end. At the end, he is coming back to deal with his people. The days of the Gentiles we be, will be fulfilled. And when is this coming? It's coming when this gospel. He said, they have rejected me. I will share this opportunity, this invitation for adoption to be renewed, to be one of my children, to all the nations of the world. And when they've heard that opportunity, and most have rejected, but when they've heard that opportunity, I will come and deal with you. When the, when the gospel has been preached to the nations of the world, I, uh, Matthew 24, 14, I, the end then shall come. If you know anything about the Internet, and if you're very aware or any aware of what China, how China through communications and transportation and all these other ways have, are now reaching in all these nations to get a foothold, to get control of information, to get control of the nations, basically. They're, they're, they're expanding out to be a major, they are a major world player, but to be a ruler of the world, I guess. That's what man always wants to do, I, I, I guess. There's only one that is. But they have expanded the Internet to almost every single nation. Uh, I know other countries, and we have, and every, all Europe has, everybody has. The Internet, as far as I know, is I, I've been some of the deepest farther south villages in Africa where the, the kids had never really seen a white man. And, and yet even there, they had these Chinese phones for about 10 bucks that you could get the Internet. They had the Internet. And if you've got the Internet, you've got the gospel being proclaimed on that. You have opportunity to hear the Word of God. And it is being proclaimed. We are, God is raising up some young men and young women out of Africa today that we believe is going to be a, there's a revival in East Africa. We're going to still believe God and love all of my brothers and sisters in West Africa. We believe, even though I see the darkness that's always plagued Africa because of witchcraft, because of tribalism. Tribalism. We, I, I see it in my own country, in the States, we see tribalism. Conservative, liberal, Democrats, Republican, ready to go to war, tribalism. We want to kill each other instead of love each other. It's united we stand, USA. It's not, and divided we fall. We need to remember that. But that's so it is in the world. If we're unified in Christ Jesus, we'll love one another. But it's only in Christ Jesus. And this gospel has been preached and is being preached to all the nations and the days of the Gentile. Our opportunity is almost to an end. That reeling about Jerusalem in Zechariah and 12, that ring of fire. It, it, we just got out of another war with the Gaza, the Hamas, and Israel, and, and then there's Hezbollah, there's Iran. It, it's just going to continue. And, and that day that everybody's getting all these nuclear bombs, that you're really going to see it looks like the end and the Lord will come back and he'll put a stop to it and he'll establish his kingdom. But on his way, on his way here, there'll be a false prince of peace first. We call him the Antichrist. That supposedly will step up and bring peace for the first three and a half years and then the greatest tribulation the world has ever seen as he's killing the Jews and what, what all the Christians can get a hold of. But at the end, when these... Following this, there is judge. Following this judgment, he said, "I come immediately." Following the great tribulation, it's in Matthew twenty-four, I believe, verse thirty-one. He returns. Verse fifteen. When you see these things, know, Daniel, that false prince of peace. Then, 
when the abomination, where the abomination of, uh, of desolation starts the last three and a half years, the great tribulation, immediately follow, verse 29 and verse 31, immediately following, the Lord returns. There's a nice timetable there. But all of these things are just before us. We have this pandemic going on right now. All the nations of the world, suddenly like that, suddenly we've got a pandemic. There are worse things coming. It's only the beginning of sorrows. It's only a, it, it's, there's going to be ebbs and flows. But you need to be renewed in your mind. You need to be as excited as I am to be a son and daughter of a living God. Father, who art in heaven, He's my Father today. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. His kingdom is coming. He's my Father. I'm excited about it. You need to make sure by the renewing of your mind through Jesus Christ that He's your Father today. And you need to tell Satan who might have his hands on you as he tried to attack my mind last night, get your hands off of me. I belong to Him. I am His priestly portion. My mind has been renewed. There is, there is no Bathsheba's in my life. You've got no right. Renew me, O oh Lord. And he did in his name for his glory that he said that the father may be glorified in him. And he was and Christ in us is to be glorified. And in that the father is glorified. Christ came to glorify the father. We're here as children, as brothers of the Lord to glorify to Jesus Christ for in no other name is there salvation. But Jesus that we may be sons and daughters today and sons forever of our Father. We have a Father in heaven. James 4.4, 4, it says, You adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is hostility toward God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Verse 5, Or do you think that the Scripture speaks to no purpose? He jealously desires the spirit which he's made within you. Now, what, what does he jealously desire? I know Exodus 25, he says he's a jealous God. Exodus 34, I'm going to probably get embarrassed here. 34, I believe 14, he says that he, his name is jealous. He's a jealous God. In Deuteronomy 4, he says he's not only a consuming fire, but a jealous God. Here, he jealously desires the spirit that he birthed in us, that he breathed into us. Have you ever thought about that? Do you not think the scripture speaks to no purpose? He jealously desires the spirit which he's made to dwell within us. Satan attacked me last night. My father was not happy about that. Satan tried to squeeze this spirit, this anointing. He tried to stop that flow. In the name of Jesus, he had to leave. He had to leave. I had to resist. I had to stand. I would have been here this morning if I had to have somebody to drive me here to, to, to tell me how to get me here because I couldn't remember to drive it. But I'm telling you, I, I'm, I'm so wound up today, I don't know that I can stand on. But God, I mentioned yesterday, the Father, the Son, the, the three persons of the Trinity are people. They're persons. They have personalities. That's what a person does. He has a personality. They're not human. They're God. But they have personalities. They're, they're, they're persons. A person's one that has personality. And, and the Father says, I'm a jealous God. I thought he was a loving God. He is. But he desires that spirit that he's made to dwell within us. It was his breath. <laughs> In us, God in us. When we died, we have to be born again spiritually. Our soul is an eternal being. It is forever. It is a living soul. But the second Adam, the last Adam, not the second Adam, the last Adam, Jesus, came as a life-giving spirit. And for all those that will receive him, guess what? We're born again. We talked about being born again. We must be born again. Our spirit must be quickened alive. 
And you can only, we, especially the Gentiles, only can be through Jesus Christ. That offering that was paid for us. And in his name, we can be born again. Now salvation that comes from being born again is an ongoing process. We spoke about this. But part of that is the renewing of our mind. We were saved, we are saved, we are being saved. All those tenses, had to look them up to, to explain them. God is at work in us in, by his salvation that is ongoing and he desires. We are his personal possession. Let me keep going. In Luke 19, 10, to, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Now, what was lost? God's breath. Man lost the breath. He sinned. You know what the son did? He said, Daddy, I will go. I, I guess as a father, Father, I will go. I think the new that I think Father kind of planned this and kind of knew these things. He kind of knows everything. But he had to have a willing son. And Jesus Christ came and became the propitiation. He took our place. He substituted himself for us. He paid the price, separated from the Father, rejected. I tell you, he died of a broken heart in Psalm 69. Amazing that his heart was shredded. And that's why I said, is he already dead? He's, it's not yet time. He died of a broken heart. I cried over that. I still cry over that. And I think I'm not going to cry over that today. I've already cried. I'm crying to just to have my mind renewed this morning, to have the Word, have the Spirit, to have my Father. I can, my Lord, have my, he, he delights in His possession. I belong to Him. His Son paid the price. I was bought with precious, 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 precious all. The body and blood of Jesus Christ. God, it says here, God never gave up on that which was lost. You know why? He knew his son would come and, 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 and restore that which was lost. What was lost was the breath of God. John 20, 19, 20, 21. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for the fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst. And to them... To them, peace be with you. When he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. And then his disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. I think I, I'm glad too this morning when I see that I've got the Lord with me. I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad. So Jesus said to them again, peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I send you. The apostles, the sent ones. I, I went to 40 nations of the world, and, and God sent me. He's now called me home, and I'm having to help others to go. But, but as a sent one, and Jesus was the apostle, the high priest and the apostle. He was sent by God into the world, and his apostles are sent and were called to the nations of the world, and I have been to many. And, uh, and I delight in having him had that opportunity. But I'm telling you, the most precious thing about all of this was that when I went, he went with me. And he's with me today. Verse 22. And when he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Breath, Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. He gave them the Holy Spirit. And guess what? Truly were born again. When our spirits are quickened alive, in the name of Christ, when we're born again, we must be born again. The salvation of God beginning to work in our life. And part of that salvation is the renewing of our minds. He has given us his word to, 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 to feast upon. I feast upon it for years, and I'm about to go back to this because I got into this studies that God had led me to specific studies where I was covering the 
a lot. I used to read and meditate on 10 chapters a day, and, and it changed my life. And I could go through the bi entire Bible about three and a half times every year. And after a while, you start to, and it's amazing, each and every time I go through the Bible, I just keep learning and learning. And, and, it, and you, can't, you can't, my mind keeps getting renewed. But without this Spirit of God within me, without this breath that, that brings all of that up when it's needed, I, I know nothing. <laughs> I know nothing. Last night, I knew nothing. But I had been attacked. And the devil had no right or authority. I belonged to my father. The son paid the price. He's the one that leads me. He's the one that keeps me by his spirit. But I belong to the Father. I'm his possession. I'm his portion. I am a son of God. Get your hands off of me and off of my mind. You have no right. I was called here this morning to share this word with you that you are precious in his sight. If you belong to him, you are God's portion, his people. In Titus 2.11, I'm going to read through 14 here. It says, For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all men. Hallelujah. The grace we've talked about is the empowerment of the Spirit of God in us to do anything. We, can't, we all are saved by grace. We all, are, he, we all do anything by grace. That by the gift of the Spirit of God empowering within us that we do not deserve. But God's free gift, because His love shown to us, empowers us to accomplish whatever He calls by the grace, and that's even salvation. We are even born again by God's free gift, and He draws us by His Spirit to Himself. We can do nothing except the grace of God, and yes, it is not merited. But it is more than unmerited. But it is the Spirit of God empowering us. Grace, grace, he said to the mountain. Grace, grace. And it, we, I have a chapter way about there about grace, grace. It's important to understand in our humility, we can grow in the empowerment of God because he can trust us with it. And we also can know him to know Satan has no right to be messing with my mind. Boy, I'm still upset about that. I'm going to stomp his head badly for a while over that. I, 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 I might never. He, that, we won't go there anymore. Titus 2.13, looking for the blessed hope and appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. I, I, our day, the day of the Gentiles are fulfilled when we see him. I will know him. We'll know as we're known. We'll be transformed in his image. Hallelujah. In a day of the regeneration, the regeneration, the restoration of all things in Acts 6, 31, all things. The day of the revealing of the sons of God, the earth that we're destroying. Now we're destroying, but man, you can't fix it. Oh, the man and his, oh, we're going to fix this. We're going to do away with this. I think we should care for it. We are responsible and we're held in account. But this earth won't be restored to the day of the revealing of, a God, uh, of the sons of God. That's what Romans 8, the, the, the creation groans. It's groaning, folks, for the day of the revealing of the sons of God because in that day is the day of the Lord when we're transformed into His image, when we'll always be with Him. But He comes back to set His kingdom up with His Jewish brothers and He, he removes iniquity from, from their hearts and they'll never sin again. As he rules with them, we'll reign and rule with him, but it's a kingdom, a Jewish kingdom over the nations of the world for a thousand years. And then his last act as judge, which we're going to talk about, the judge and the judgment, his last act, because all things that are judged are judged by the Son. He is the judge. At the great white throne judgment, he hands his kingdom, it tells us in 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, over to the Father. Guess what? When the Father comes and makes all things new. All heavens, all earth. And he brings Jerusalem, heavenly Jerusalem with him. New Jerusalem. Adorned as a bride but for his Jewish people. We already got married. It's amazing what, what, what is yet just before us. But in that day when the son hands the kingdom to the father and takes his seat at his right hand as the lamb of God. 
He is, he's no longer just a son. He's the Lamb of God. And you need to be in the Lamb of God's book of life. The Lamb of God. There's a vision of him in Revelation 4. The Lamb of God is one is one that's like a lamb that sits at the right hand of the Father. He's still the judge. He will judge the living and the dead. His last very act as judge is the great white throne judgment, and you do not want to be a part of that because that's when the dead stand before him and they cast in eternal damnation. That's his last, and then he hands his kingdom, the millennial rule of Christ, hands, hands the kingdom over to the Father. And guess what? There's a whole new deal, a whole new universe. All things are made new. But I think the Father, my Father, my Father, likes bright and shiny new things. He makes all things new. What an amazing what an amazing eternity we have with the Father, with the Son, with all these celestial beings that, that Paul says we'll judge angels. You know, at the day of the Lord, when the brothers, when now we're brothers, he has his bride, we're one in him. Uh, the messengers, God's messengers from that day, I was no longer the angels. The angels are serving the sons. The messenger, when they say messengers, it's not just because his messengers today are the angels. The angels. After the day of the Lord, his army are the sons of God, his brothers. They are the ones that run through the troop, leap over a wall. They are the ones that if there's something to deal with in whatever cities they're ruling or reigning, they step in. It's no longer the angels. It's the brothers. It's the sons of God that rule and reign with Christ for a thousand years. So I see angels after the day of the Lord. I see them still talking about angels. When it says messengers, those messengers have changed. The Lord has a new army. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We shall rule and reign with him for a thousand years. I, I, I see I, I, you translators think about that because it still keeps saying angels. There comes a change in things. Believe me, in the day of the Lord, all things change. It is something. It is soon. That's amazing. In Deuteronomy 32, 9, it says, For the Lord, uh, did I read Titus 2, 14? If I didn't, I really need to read Titus 2, 14. Uh, Who gave himself to redeem us from every lawless deed and to purify for himself a people for his own possession, zealous for good deeds. Now, now we're a people for his own possession. Now, let me read Deuteronomy 32, 9. For the Lord's portion, the Lord's possession, is his people. Jacob is allotment of his inheritance. Jacob is just in a down payment of his inheritance. Guess what the rest of it is? It's us, the sons of God. The people are the father's portion, the sons. They're important. He grieved, it grieved him when when. It hurt him. It pained the Holy One of Israel when they rebelled, when they were no longer in relationship. They, they had died. They had, they had, he was going to have to send his son and because they couldn't keep the law, and they didn't keep the law. They were righteous men. God gave spirit, and they were righteous men, and they were in Abraham's bosom till the judge showed up and he emptied and shut down Hades as he overcome death, hell, and the grave. He led captivity captive. And they're waiting to get their new bodies also. We'll share with that in the resurrections and in judgment. But the judge, but they, those people that, that were his inheritance, Jacob was an allotment, a portion of his inheritance. Guess who were the rest? Hello? Hello, Father. I, today, because of my Lord and Savior and King and, and the Lamb, because of the Lamb of God that took away all of my sin, I have a Father. I've been adopted. I belong, I'm His possession. Jacob was a, an allotment. Here we are. The armies of the Lord Jesus Christ, His brothers, the church, His bride. That, that, that's... that's what all this is, was about. God had this amazing plan from before beginning. It was never ever even beginning to have a family, to have sons, to have this kingdom, and, and, he, and he, to have this people. And even as he breath breathed himself into this clay, wet clay, he realized 
All of this. There was nothing that's ever caught God offhand. But it did, it pained the Holy One of Israel that they had, that he had to go through this knowing that one day his son would have to come pay the price. And he did. But he also was able to rejoice and be glad because of all the glory that is not only set before him and his son, but of all of his sons. And all of the creation, the new one, and even this one, as it's restored. In the regeneration, Acts 6.31, when Jesus comes on the day of the Lord, he'll restore these things. Man's not going to fix it. It's going to get worse and worse. And we're going to, before these wars are over in, there's not going to be much even left to it. It will be restored for a thousand years. Before the Father comes and makes all things new. But it also, in the day of restoration, guess what? I get my rib back. My wife gets her maleness back. We are transformed into his image. We'll always be with him. We get a white horse and we get the white linen robes, which is righteous acts of the saints. That's about the priesthood. I'm going to be talking, I'm going to be sharing about that. I'm excited about the priesthood, about we're, we're a kingdom of priests, but we're his priests. We, we are a purchased possession. And we have the breath has been renewed in us. We've been born again. We've been quickened spiritually alive. We are his sons and his daughters here on this earth. And we are a prized possession. In 2 Peter, 1 Peter 2, 9, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Now, what are we? We're chosen race, Jews. We're not. We're not the Jews. We're sons. A royal priesthood, they are called, we, we're, we're that. We get to be a priest, a kingdom of priests, a kingdom of priests, kings and priests. In Christ, because our Lord and Jesus, whom we are being transformed in, who we've been born again in, whom we are like, whom is our Lord and Savior, He is a King and He's a priest. And we're gonna be like we're a kingdom of priests, and we'll rule and reign with Him. A holy nation, holiness, folks, no way around it, a people for God's own possession. I believe the next chapter I do is on the priesthood. I'm excited about that. But today, we are God's people for his possession, and he delights in that. He was jealous. He jealously desired that which had been lost, that spirit that had died within his people. And the Lord Jesus came to restore what? That which was lost that we may be born again, that our minds may be renewed, that we might be transformed into the image of Him spiritually and one day physically. That we may be sons and daughters of a living God. And God, and we're His. We're His portion. We belong to Him. His Son paid the price. And He delights in us. Let us not be foolish as his people, the Jews, the chosen race, who pained him. It says it pained the Holy One of Israel by their always rebellion, by their rebellion. Sin is rebellion. Rebellion is sin. Anytime we rebel, we disobey, is sin. Rebel. Oh, I'm going to be my own God. I'm going to make my own decision. I'm going to rebel. No, you rebel. You have been bought with a price if you belong with him. You need to have a renewed mind. Satan, you're a liar. You think my mind's not renewed today? You think this word, it's too much word almost. It's, it's coming at me from everywhere. You're a liar, devil. <laughs> In the name of Jesus. The devil's a liar. Don't, you don't have, we, we're sons and daughters of God. We, he delights in us. We're his Purchase possession. We have great value. 
Let's not pain. Let's not grieve this Holy Spirit that has breathed on us, this gift of life, this gift of the Spirit, this renewing, this divine health and divine blessings and all the blessings that has come upon us through relationship in our God, through our God, our Lord Jesus Christ and our Father, whom I call Father. That's his name. The Son revealed us to the name of the Lord. And he says, Father, I reveal to him thy name. Father. He's my Father. He happens to be God of all. He happens to be the Lord God Almighty. But his name to us is Father. And we can come boldly in the name of the Son. Through him only. Only way to have access is through the Son. But we do. We've been born again through Christ in him by faith, to come boldly before the throne of grace and say, Father God, oh, here I am again. (laughs) Here I am again. But I'm here today, Father. I love you. I thank you for being so faithful in my life, for keeping me when I should have been toast so many times. I delight. I delight. It is the greatest joy in my life to be your son, to be your servant, to come and serve these people to share this amazing word that you have, have, have for us here, who called us out of darkness. You called me out of darkness into his marvelous light, the light of this salvation that continues to grow in me. It, it, as I understand more and more of what has been mine through this amazing relationship as thy son, and how to walk in it by humbly coming before you and loving you and praising you and worshiping you and obeying you. You have poured, you have lavishly poured out upon me this overflowing, this wave of overflowing of blessing and of life, peace, joy. I, there there is no desire left in my life. I mean, anything I thought I wanted, I, I think you gave me almost, and most of it became a major problem. I just thought I wanted. And I finally realized what, who and what I wanted was you. Father, the Father. I'm talking to you, but I'm talking to the Father too. I, he, I, I know him. He knows me. I, I, I plan to spend the rest of my life, whatever that is, Minister to him, getting to know him better. I, it, I, I feel like these messages, I don't have a whole lot to share with you, but what I'm trying to share and I've already shared. And so I want, I want to empower others to go to multiply my own ministry by others taking these videos and, 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 and take it. It's not mine, it's his. This is his word. This is his truth. This is his power. It's his plan for many of you. I, I've done my going. I, I now can go by the internet. I can share all this word by the internet. And you can take it and, and, and bow before him and allow him to birth all this into your life. And you run. That others may run. That others may run. And share this great light. And light up this dark world. I, I've, I've been saying for years there's a great light. The dark, Africa has suffered so much because of witchcraft. Tribalism. So much witchcraft. So much, it's always hindered Africa and the corruption that comes, just a lot of darkness in Africa. There's this light. God going to pick the dark continent and make a, make a light. I believe it. FC in Africa. I'm, we're going to, got these young brothers. God's told me I couldn't even go back to Africa after about 20 years. Right out of nowhere, he says, you, I, you, you don't go anymore. You stay here. I'm going to take these videos. You can answer questions. I answer questions daily on the internet to all my sons and daughters. And uh, they got questions, I answer them. I try. Sometimes they make me do a little more study. It's a little more challenging. But anyway, if they got questions, I think most of the time, if they're about these subjects, I most of the time can answer them and give them guidance and watch God work in them. He also gives me words of knowledge and wisdom to how to counsel them. Well, sometimes they have to let a little air out of a few of them. But anyway, they, I think they think that they'll have a camera in their house or wherever because I, I know what they're doing. God just shows me and allows me to give them guidance 
from a distance, and I'm able to stay home with my wife and my family and my kids, and uh, hopefully can be a little better businessman. It, God has had to keep many of my business. They, 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 they've suffered by my absence many, many years, but yet God has kept them. God is so faithful. He loves us, and I love him today. In Malachi 3.16, then those who feared the Lord spoke to one another, and the Lord gave attention and heard it, and a book of remembrance was written before him for those who fear the Lord and who esteem his name. They will be mine. He gave us a book. They will be mine, says the Lord of hosts, on the day that I prepare my own possession, and I will spare them as a man spares his own son, his own son who serves him. You're going to be his. So you will again distinguish between the righteous and the wicked, between the one who serves and God and one who does not serve him. He's going to distinguish between his servants and those who are not. God's possessions. Ephesians 1, 3 and 4 and 5. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. Just as he chose us, just as he chose us before the foundation of the world, God knows the end from the beginning. He also knows there is no end, but he knows the end from the beginning. He knows all of it. God had a plan. He had a plan to have a people that truly loves him, that will obey him, that will keep his commandments. That, that will cherish him because he cherishes us, that we would respond likewise. That, that, the, that they would be wholly blameless before him in love. If you love him, you will keep his commandments. They're not burdensome. There's life. There's health. There's peace. There's prosperity. There is so much. We talked about the divine exchange and, and loving him and abiding in him and obeying. It's all, you get all the exchange. He, he had this, but you get all of this. He took all of this himself. You don't have to take this. He took this that we could have that. Amazing. I took almost two hours to share it, but if I don't get going here, I might be here longer today than I planned. He predestined us to as adoption as sons through Jesus Christ himself, according to the kind intention of his will. He, pre he planned it. He chose us. Don't reject that. He chose us and gave us this opportunity. Don't squander. Verse 6, to the praise and glory of his grace, his mercy, his spirit, which he freely bestowed on us, the beloved. He's given us, he gave us his spirit. He, he's amazing. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace. Verse 8, which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight. Hallelujah. He lavished it. Uh, 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 you know what? The la it's a wave overflowing. That's what abundance is. It's this wave that just overflows. We call that a hurricane where I come from. But anyway, God's blessings, it's just this wave. That overflows. Ephesians 1 9. He made known to us the mystery of his will according to his kind intention which he purposed in him. Verse 10. With a view to an administration suitable to the fullness of times, that is the summing up of all things in Christ, things in heaven, things in the earth on him. Verse 11. And also we have obtained an inheritance. And inheritance, we've attained it, having been predestined according to his purpose, who works all things after the counsel of his will, to the end that we who were first to hope in Christ would be to the praise of his glory. In him, you also, after listening to the message of the truth, the gospel of your salvation, having also believed, you were sealed in him. With the Holy Spirit of promise, you were sealed with the breath of God that he jealously desires. Don't, don't pain the Holy One of Israel by rejecting through disobedience. 
Verse 14, who is given as a pledge. This is given as an assurance of this eternity. Why haven't been born again? And many do turn their back and walk away and walk after, walk, choose death instead of life. I, I choose darkness instead of life. I don't know that they ever, they never seem to have grasped this love in God that loves, loves us so much. It's not always easy, but I'm telling you, he never fails. He never, he's always, it seems like it's sometimes it's right at the last, go it under for the last time, and he just picks us up. He, you know, after a while, you just know, you know that's going to happen no matter what. Rome, Rome can be burning. Sometimes I feel like I'm, I'm near up there with my fiddle. I smell the smoke. I see the fire. But my God, still on the throne. I belong to him. All of this belongs to him. If it burns, he wants it to burn it. It's his purpose, his will. Satan, you a liar. You can't take my mind. You can't take my possessions. You can't take my children. You can't take my wife. You can't take nothing. It belongs to him unless he allows it. And if he allows it, then you just walked into a trap. Hallelujah. 1 Peter 2, 4. And come unto him as to a living stone, which has been rejected by men, but is a choice and precious in the sight of God. You also, verse 5, as a living stone are being built up as a spiritual house for a holy priesthood, kingdom of priests, to offer spiritual sacrifices. We're going to talk about that. Acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. We have been built up. You know why? We're his temple. We're his body. We're his church. We're a living stone, but we're put together into this big rock fortress <laughs> founded on the rock, which is Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, we are a temple of God. I'll keep reading. 139, 13, 14, 15 Psalms. For you were formed, you formed my inward parts. You wove me in my mother's womb. This is I will give you, I, it talks about the knowledge of God. Talk about the creation here. David understood this. You know, your eyeball has two million working parts. Your brain even goes beyond all that. The knowledge of God, our bodies demands that there was a creator. You didn't crawl out of some pond somewhere. It's just, it's amazing. I'll read it here. I am fearfully and wonderfully made, David said. Wonder, wonderful are your works, and my soul knows it very well. I know this. To think some, to accept some man made up garbage, <laughs> that does, can't explain nothing. That's just rejecting God in truth. We know this. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret and skillfully wrought in the depths of the earth. You took the very minerals out of the earth, dirt, dust. I've heard one time that, you know, he created this beautiful archangel, Satan. He was the most beautiful and he got his pride. So he took the dirt this time. <laughs> he had a better place. He took the dirt, the minerals from the earth. We were created from, from dirt. Was a little bit of water from the mist and made of clay. So what became special about that dirt was his breath. He breathed that breath. Uh, my frame, it was not hidden when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought from the depths of the earth. Your eyes have seen my un, uh, unformed substance, and in your book were all written the days that were ordained for me when as yet there was not one of them. In other words, he knew me before I was even formed. Uh, for our citizenship is in heaven, uh, Philippians 3, 20. For our citizenship is heaven, from which also we are eagerly wait for a Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 21, who will transform the body of our humble state into the conformity of the body of his glory, by the exertion of the power that he has subjected all things to himself. The Lord, he'll, he'll bring it to be. Hosea 3.1, I want to share this with you. I just kind of threw this in a little bit. It kind of hit me if, if I'm a living stone, if I'm got the body of the Lord, if I'm the temple of God. Uh, I got a whole, I, I'm not, I don't know that I'm going to teach on it, but there's, 
about the body that God has entrusted us, how important that body is to God that we take care of it. He said, if you destroy this body, I'll destroy you. Anyway, we are God's temple. It said, the Lord said to me, go again, love a woman who is loved by her husband, yet an adulteress, even as the Lord loves the son of Israel, though they turn to other gods and love raisin cakes. There's a lot of us, the sons of, not Israel, the sons of God through Jesus Christ. Yet we turn, even though we're, we're sons of God, we turn to the gods of this world and we feed this body. We're addicted to raisin cake, gluttony. We don't, he has entrusted this body. This body was bought with a price. We're his temple. We, we need to buffet the body, not buffet it. We need to buffet the body. We need to rule over this body that he's entrusted us to guard and to keep, not to abuse this body. It's his body. It's not our body. He bought this. It's his. We're his temple. This is the house God lives in. He lives in here. He lives within me. You need to think about that. Do you love raisin cakes? Do you love the gods of this world? That was the problem he had with his people. We're his people now. We're, we're, this, we're the people of Jesus Christ. We're the church of Jesus Christ. We're the body of Christ. We're God's chosen possession. Watch out for raisin cakes. Watch out for the gods of this world. In 1 Corinthians 3.16, do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? Verse 17, if any man destroys the temple of God, God will destroy you, for the temple of God is holy, and that is what you are. 1 Corinthians 6, 19. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit is in you, which you have from God, and that you are not your own? And 20. For you have been bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body. I've struggled most of my life, a lot of my life, I think we all do. I mean, there's a discipline. There's a discipline, our, there's a holy discipline in our life that none of us can do on our own strength. We're always going, I'm going to do this, and you don't do it, you lie. I'm going to do this, and the Lord's going to help me. He's going to help me discipline my body. He's going to help me. I'm working. As I've gotten older, I've seemed to have gotten a man of more words. God uses that here today. I've I, I tend to be a little long-winded, but, but I have to guard what comes out of my mouth because I'm speaking a lot of words, and so I'm trying to learn to discipline how much what I say when I'm not, when I'm not sharing the Lord because if I start talking very long, I'll be sharing the Lord, and then, I'm really, then I really take up somebody's time. And so anyway, but the thing is, is that I'm trying to, I have to continue to discipline this body, maybe not as much as I used to with my weight, because I have suddenly blown up and, and have to really learn to fat. I, you cannot do that, what I'm saying, any of this without Him. But we have to confess our sins. If we're addicted to raising cakes or we're in love with the gods of this world, we just repent and ask God's help. But to buffet this body, to live a fasted life takes the power of the Spirit within us to help us. It's not easy, but it is when you understand that you have the strength within you in His name and His Spirit, He will strengthen you. He will give you wisdom and counsel. He'll teach you how to eat, what not to eat, and when to eat. Teach you to exercise, to try to keep this body ready to go for Him. We're not our own. We were purchased. It belongs to Him. We are a purchased possession. We're His portion. And this is His temple. We're, we're the temple of God. We're these live, little living stones. He's made this temple that He dwells. We don't belong to ourselves. We sold ourselves in the slave market. He sent His Son and paid the price. We're a purchased possession. We're no longer our own. Guard this house that houses the Spirit of God. And that's not meddling. That's the truth. You need 
You need to stand up. Get your eyes off the world and off that television. Go out and take a walk around the house. Go make a garden. Do something physical. Start trusting God for, you, for your bodies. I'm 70 years old. I'm fairly decent shape other than my mind yesterday. I'm doing good, but I've quickly got a hold of that. But I have to do the same with my body. I, I have to watch it. It quickly changes. You get a little slack here and suddenly my pants aren't fitting anymore. Or getting tight. That's enough. I don't, don't wait till they don't fit. When it starts getting tight, it's time to, time to act. If you see action, react to the bad. Overcome. Get rid of the raisin cakes. Matthew 32, 14. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field which a man found and hid again. And, and verse 44. And again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking fine pearls. The... Um, let me do verse 44 first. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field which a man found and hid again. And from the joy over it, he goes and sells all that he has and buys the field. That was verse 44. I went on to 45, but or 46. But um, I want to tell you, the field's the church. And, and the pearl or the treasure, was not Jesus Christ. The treasure was you. You were purchased. The church was purchased. Great pride. For what? That which God valued, which is his children, his sons and daughters. We were bought with this unbelievable price by the blood of Jesus Christ. Acts 20, 28. You purchased possession, the blood, the life, the nefesh, the life in that blood, that righteous, holy life of God, Jesus, that was shed, a life for a life. His life was given in a horrific way that I may receive life, a nefesh for a nefesh, a life for a life, eye for eye. God paid the price with his son. We belong to him. And he has bought this field. Again, I just want you to try to hear today in verse 45, 13, 45, and 46. Again, he says, uh, we, uh, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking fine pearls. Saint, it's the next two verses after 45, and it's the same message. And upon finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Uh, I want you to know you are that pearl. We always teach that the pearl of great price was Jesus Christ. No, he was one that bought it. He's the price. He was what the price was. He paid for that pearl. And God values you. You are his portion. The people are his portion. We are a purchased possession, a chosen, a royal priesthood, a chosen nation, a kingdom of priests, but a purchased possession. It was a nefesh, the life of Christ, the blood, in that blood that was purchased, you and I, for us. But God, being rich in mercy, because of his great love toward us, loved us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you've been saved. And he raised us up with him and seated us with him in heavenly places. The actual word says that we've been enthroned with him. In Christ that is set the right hand of the Father. Guess who sits with him? We. We are there. We have access through him into the very presence of our Father, the Almighty God. Father. He's our Father. Because we're Son. Because we have been enthroned with him right there in the holies of holies where man meets God. We're there. We have access. Don't squander. That's how valuable that, we, that we've been enthroned right there with God, the right hand of God, that we can come boldly before him because we have access. Hallelujah. We are his possession. We're his sons. We're his daughters. One day be here. And, and so that in the ages to come, he might show the surpassing riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ, for by grace you have been saved through faith, that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. We can't earn it. Verse 9, not as a result of works, so that 
no one will boast. Verse 10, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them. Walk in them, church. 1 Peter 1, 3, 4 and 5. Blessed be the God and Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and, and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through, through, through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed. How are we revealed? As sons of God. The restoration of all things, the regeneration, to be restored as he originally created man, both male and female, Adam. Adam to second men. Jesus came as the last Adam. When I did Adam's Adam, I meant from one son to many sons. But it actually be, it should have been Adam to second men. Because as Jesus came back as the second man, we'll talk about it in resurrection, in, in the resurrections. First, second Corinthians 6, 17, Therefore, if any man is Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. 18, 19, 20. Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and have, has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself not imputing their trespasses to them and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now that we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading through us, we implore you on, in, on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he made him to, that who knew no sin to be sin for us, for we might become the righteousness of God in him. Amen. In 1 Peter 1.22, um, uh, let me go back. I'm going to read this here. It says, I, some notes I put up here. It says, a total new, li new kind of life, New Testament salvation, divine, eternal, incorruptible, indestructible. That's this new life that we've been given. Are you walking in that? Are you walking in the fullness of his salvation? It is divine. It is eternal. It's incorruptible. It's indestructible. Devil, you hear that? 1 Peter 1.22. It says, Since you have purified your souls and obeying the truth through the Spirit, in sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently with a pure heart, having been born again, hallelujah, having been born again, my spirit, his spirit, a liar, not of corruptible seed, We've talked about this. It's the Logos word. See, but incorruptible. Through the Logos, the word of God, which lives and abides forever in us. That seed, I love it, I love it, and planted in this body. The, lid, the same Logos that created all things. He's with God. He created all that was. The Logos was God. He created all that was created. We know John, first chapter. I'm getting ready to read it to you right here. Uh, who, whoever has been born of God does not sin. His seed remains in him. That's first John. Uh, anyway, I preached this. You know it. Uh, seed remains in him. He cannot sin, sin because he has been born of God. For 5, 3, first John. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandment. And his commandments are not burdensome. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. 2 Timothy 1, 14. Guard through the Holy Spirit, the breath, who dwells in us, the treasure that has been entrusted. This treasure that was lost, that, God, that the Lord Jesus came to restore. He jealously desires his spirit. It's a treasure that's been entrusted to us. This very spirit of God with us, in us, through us. This treasure has been entrusted to you. Guard it. Guard it through his own empowerment, through the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. This treasure. 
Through his own empowerment, we guard his presence, which is him. The Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Exodus 19, 5. Now then, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenants, then you shall be my own possession among all the peoples, for the earth is mine. Verse 6. And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the sons of Israel. Revelations 5, 9 says, And they sang a new song, saying, Worthy are you to take the book and break its seals, for you were slain and purchased for God with your blood, men from every tribe, tongue, people, and nation. For you have made them to be a kingdom of priests to our God, and they will reign upon the earth. Revelations 20. One, three, and I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is among men. Welcome to earth, Father. It's all new. And he will dwell among them, and they shall be his people, and God himself will be among them. The Lord God himself in the very end. When, when the Son, his last judgment, the great white throne judgment, he turns, hands his kingdom to the Father. In the tabernacle of God, the Lord God Himself is with us. We'll see Him face to face. Here's amazing. Here's some amazing truth here. They say, and He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there will no longer be any death. There will no longer be any mourning, crying, pain. First thing, all the first things have passed away. And He who sits on the throne, behold, I am making all things new. And He said, Right, for these words are faithful and true. And then He said to me, It is done. The Alpha and Omega the beginning and the end, and I will give to the one who thirsts the springs of water without cost. And he who overcomes, I love this, he who overcomes will inherit these things, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. His name will be written right on it. We'll see him face to face. We all will be sons of God through the regeneration and then through when he makes all things new for his own people, the Jews. It is an amazing word. It is an amazing truth. We rule and reign by being first born again, and then by allowing His Spirit to rule and reign in our life through this precious gift of the Spirit of God, His breath that was given to us. And by it, we belong to Him. We are His temple. We are His body, His church. I love you. I hope they embrace the love of the Father. For those that know Him as Father, it is an amazing, amazing life. In Jesus' name, amen.